Hi, I'm Aaron Dabolo, and this is a UVW Techniques uh, video tutorial. What I'm going to cover in this is not how to lay out UVs, but how to use UVs in shaders to achieve uh, more complicated or more uh, difficult goals uh, without having to have very convoluted UV layouts or make textures that are very difficult to work with. Uh, this is going to just open up uh, using UVW uh, coordinates to do all of the work for you uh, in a much easier way. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is showing UVW uh, mapping channels. What this is, is it's essentially, essentially layers of UVWs that you can assign different maps to. The example that we're going to cover here is how to make a road uh, over some grass and the road and the grass won't be tiling and we'll have a, uh, a road going down the middle. And all of this is going to be done with really small maps. And the other example I'm going to show you is how to use mapping tiles. Uh, this is uh, going to help you keep a bunch of components all within one shader, which is going to be easier for changing the various aspects of the shader, but you're going to be able to control a bunch of different uh, objects all with different uh, different looks or different you know, UV layouts but all within one shader. Um, for example, this would be good for like a product where you would have like logos or decals all over a surface but the rest of the product is all one, one shader. Um, or you could use it for texturing like a character with multiple resolutions and different UV layouts all with one mapping channel. Alright, well let's get started. So here we are in 3D Studio Max uh, and this is our environment that we're going to texture the road going across uh, for this UVW mapping channels demo. To start off with, let's just lay out where this road is going to be. So if I put a unwrap modifier on here, and because this was made from a plane, these are very uh, simple UVs. It's all just a grid, just like this. So I've painted a map that looks like this. That is essentially where our ground is going to be. Let's just drop this on there so we can see. Perfect. It's right down where the road should be. Now, by default, all of these mapping channels will be set to map channel 1, which is fine for starters. So, now that we're sure that our mask and everything is working fine, let's start off by making our grass shader. I'm going to open up the material editor, and let's just start with grass here. In the diffuse slot, I'm going to put a composite material. In the texture, I'm going to load up a bitmap, and I'm going to grab grass1. And here you'll see the mapping channels. If I go ahead and apply this, and display it in viewport, you'll see that it's going to tile once across the whole thing. It's using the mapping channel 1, right here. Because our UVW map is using mapping channel 1, and it covers the entire object, it's as if this is all one tile. I'm going to go ahead and rename this just for clarity purposes, dash one. Now I'll put a UVW map on here and I will make it 30 so it's a little bit smaller. And now you can see that we have tiling over more of the surface and you can clearly see where this tiling is, especially if I make it a little bit smaller here. So that looks pretty gross. But we'll be doing something about it. I'm gonna, for the time being here, uh, apply this to map channel 2. And you're going to see it's going to go back to using the UVs of this map channel once I change this to 2. In order to inform the texture map to be using map channel 2, you need to make sure that this is on explicit map channel and change this to 2. If I were to go back and put the road mask on here, you can see that it is still using the original coordinates that we have, but our grass is using the other mapping coordinates. So back in the material editor, I'll go up to our composite level here, and I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to go ahead and load in another texture, grass 2. Again, this is set to map channel 1, so if I apply it, you'll see that it's going to cover the entire object. This one I'm going to set to map channel 3, which we're going to assign here in just a moment. Renaming this to map channel 2, for clarity's sake, I'm going to copy it and then paste it and rename it 3 after I set it down here to map channel 3. I'm going to go ahead and offset this, give it a little bit of rotation and scale, so now this map and the other map are not tiling on the same tiles. Next, 
I'm going to mask in between them. I'll just load up this mask over here in the composite material, put a noise in there, set it to use the explicit map channel 1, which is a tile of just our entire object, and let's display this. Set this scale down here to 0.1, make it fractal, and give it a little bit of clamping. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick preview render so that we can see what we're dealing with. Perfect. You can see these areas here that are blending in between our different grasses. We have one grass here and another grass here. And because they have different UV tiling coordinates, it's a lot more difficult to see if they're tiling. Let's just go ahead and, uh, for illustration purposes, turn off the top layer, and when I render it, you can see, boom, 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 we got a bunch of tiling. So, by simply putting a couple of these together, we, uh, we're removing those very clear tiling locations. So now that we have our grass set up, I'm just going to duplicate this, call it dirt, go in here, and I'm just going to replace these with our dirt textures. Applying this to the object and test rendering, you can see that we've got our dirt. This one looks like it's going to want a little bit different clamping in our levels on the noise map. So let's just go ahead and finesse this a little bit. There, that looks a little bit better. So now that we have both of these together, let's mask in between them in a third material. I'm going to use a blend material, but you could use a composite material, or in V-Ray, you can use a V-Ray composite material. I'm going to instance in both of these maps, dirt and grass, and then I'll mask them with our mask. It's using map channel 1. Let's go ahead and apply this and do a render. <laughs> Whoops, we've got it inverted. So let's just go ahead and do a swap on these. Render it again, and there you have it. Non-tiling maps for both the dirt and the grass masked in between. The real power and benefit of this is that all of these maps are 512 maps. However, we're able to get a lot of tiling detail uh, essentially for free. This is a great way for texturing environments or other large objects that you would easily see tiling on. That's it for this part. Thanks for watching. So here we are in our UVW mapping tiles scene. I'm going to show you how to create a I'm going to show you how to create a texture that when applied to this object will have one look, but when applied to different objects will have a different look. So I'm just going to drag this texture onto here. So now we have our base texture. I'm going to go ahead and take this map. I'm going to put it into a composite map. So here we are. Next, I'm going to duplicate this object two times. Now, using the same UVs for this base texture and without using a UVW mapping channel, I'm going to make these objects have a different decal on each of them. So opening up the material editor, I'm going to add a new layer. And just for illustration purposes, I'll just put a solid color in there. And here in the mask, I'm going to put a new bitmap. OK, so for starters, you can see that we have this showing across all of our objects. So let's say I want this one to say A, this one to say nothing, and this one to say B. How would we set this up? I'm going to go ahead and add a UVW map, unwrap, sorry, 
and you can see that we have a flat UV flat laid out just for this. As you know, here are the 0 to 1 coordinates for your, your texture map. Outside of this, this is 1 to 2, and 2 to 3, and you can keep going infinitely, and as long as your texture is tiling, you're going to be in good shape. What I'm going to do is still using the same UV coordinates, I'm going to click this button right here, and just offset this 1 in U. So now, this tile is right over here. Having this applied to our object, it still looks exactly the same because everything is still in the same place, it's just offset over to the right one. If I go back into our material and I change this letter A to have different mapping coordinates, for example, if I turn off tiling and set its offset plus one in U, now it is not going to tile anymore. If I go ahead and render, you can see that these are using the previous UV coordinates and this is using the special ones that we just set up. To help illustrate this, what we've done is we took the A that was here and was tiling and pick our texture here. Now it used to be tiling forever but now it is only existing in this plus one and since tile is turned off it only will go here. If I do the same thing with this one right here, I put another UVW unwrap on there and edit it. And let's say we'll offset this in negative 1U. Now it's popped over here. If I hop back in our material editor, make a new layer, let's just put that color of black right in there, add a mask, put in our B, we'll turn off tiling, and we'll put the offset at negative 1. Now, if I render this, you'll see we have our original A and B, and we're good to go. What's really nice about this is now that you have this set up, you can have placed like texture decals or little logos or things on a product design or perhaps damage on a spaceship or like metal tiles or any number of things to be able to simplify this detail. However, going down here into our base texture map, I can still go ahead and set any of these objects to whatever I want and it still is fine. This is handy for setting up complicated shaders that you can really control easily later on. So this is all just in one map. If I had set up reflection or bump or any number of other things, it would still apply across all of the objects. So now that you've seen how to use these UVW techniques, you can not only use these for placing decals on a piece of geometry, you can also use it for controlling multiple maps. If I had different UVW maps for one object, I could put those in different map channels, and then I could load in different textures into each of those, even at different resolutions, and be able to assemble them all together in one map channel for a shader. It's things like this that make editing and controlling your scene much easier down the line. It's a lot better than having to paint three maps or do a bunch of finagling with different UV sets to get it all to work. I use these techniques all the time to speed up my workflow. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope you found it useful. I know that I definitely use these techniques a lot to just shortcut my workflow and keep things really efficient and easy to change uh, because the client is always going to want to be changing something at the very last minute. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.